All right. Uh, thanks for being here, of course. I, I think it was pretty much common knowledge that the early, early uh, games throughout uh, or at the start of this season were going to be crucial in the selection of this squad. Um, hence, the squad we've come up with is Stephen Smith, captain, David Warner, Cameron Bancroft, Jackson Bird, Pat Cummins, Peter Hanscom, Josh Hazelwood, Usman Kawaja, Nathan Lyon, Sean Marsh, Tim Payne, Chad Sayers and Mitchell Stark. Uh, a squad that we think is very, very well balanced, uh, good experience, plenty of depth in the batting and, and plenty of bowling. Over to you, happy to answer questions. Who would like to start us off? Robbie. <coughs> Trevor, can you just talk a bit about Tim Payne's inclusion and how tough was it picking him given he hasn't yeah, been playing shield yeah. cricket as a keeper? Uh, of course, um, it was fairly tough. We had a, had a lengthy debate about the wicket-keeping position, of, of course. Now, w with Tim, I think it's been widely uh, acknowledged for, for a small amount of time now that he is regarded as the best gloveman in the country. Uh, add that to the fact that he is our T20 wicketkeeper and performs very, very well there. His batting has been pretty good of late. Uh, and then, of course, you go the other side of the coin, the unconvincing performances, in our view, uh, of the wicket, other wicketkeeping contenders. And that's no disrespect to those other wicketkeepers either, because there is a couple of quite good young keepers out there that we certainly have our eye on for the future. Crash? Sorry. I guess we say um, it's an interesting road, though, isn't it, for Payne? Because last year he was overlooked for Jake Doran in Tasmania. A and this year, did you think of, of asking him to play any Shield matches, like if he was right front and centre, or did his selection come in very late? Uh, firstly, on last year, I'm not sure what was going on in Tasmania at that stage. Uh, I can't answer that question. That's an issue for Tasmanian cricket. Uh, with regards to this season... A uh, difficult situation once again for Tasmania, having the incumbent wicketkeeper playing for them. Uh, Tim uh, obviously had to play if he was asked to. I think a couple of weeks ago we obviously showed our hand by asking him to play uh, in the CA11 v England uh, in Adelaide. And then from there Tasmania chose him to play as a batsman, uh, batting at number four for Tasmania in the recent Shield game. I think we all know he made 70 odd not out. And just one on uh, Sean Marsh, uh, who wasn't given a contract at age 34. Sure. Is his reselection a sign that the young players who you so hope to pick just haven't come through? I think, once again, um, the younger players that we have <laughs> chosen over the past 12 months or so uh, at this stage have not given us enough um, performance to be chosen uh, in the initial squad for the Ashes. And the Ashes are very important, of course, and we don't feel it, it's the ideal um, venue to inject them again, uh, particularly in such an important series, when, the, when they're not giving us uh, the form that we require. Sorry, just one last one. Just on Pat Renshaw, um, was it just a feeling that his, that his form had faded to a, to a point where it, it, it wouldn't have done him any good to play the Ashes? Yeah, well, once again, a similar, similar uh, reasoning as I just suggested for uh, some of the others that were in contention. Uh, once again, the way Matthew is playing at the moment, we don't consider it ideal to inject him uh, into the first test uh, v England. Matthew is highly regarded by us as a selection panel and see, we certainly see him as a, as a long-term player for Australia. So we would ideally like him to go back to Sheffield Shield cricket, re-evaluate uh, the way he's playing uh, and belt the door down basically with runs and demand selection as Cameron Bancroft has just done. Uh just on, on Bancroft, what, what is the rationale there behind picking him? I think just weight of runs, basically. I think that speaks for itself. Louis? Trevor, can you kind of go through some of the other contenders for the number six spot? I guess guys like Maxie and, and Hilton Cartwright who have been left out. Yeah, well, both those fellas obviously were uh, spoken about. And once again, we came up with uh, the fact that they haven't performed well enough in the early rounds of, of the competition this year. As I suggested, they were going to be crucial rounds for everybody and everybody knew there were positions up for grabs. So it was up to them to perform and, and present their case to us. 
we just feel that Sean Marsh in particular, if we're, if we're going down that path again, uh, has performed much, much better and demanded to be chosen. Just a question for Steve, if that's right. Uh, Steve, were you uh, surprised by this squad and uh, are you happy with how, you know, the makeup of it? Yeah, I am happy with the makeup. I think we've, um, we've got a good balanced side. Um, the, the six batters that are in form at the moment, uh, which is really important for us. Um, guys are scoring runs and demanding selection. You know, Cameron Bancroft, his, his shield performances at the start of the year have been exceptional. Um, alongside Sean Marsh as well, who, who he's opened the batting with. So uh, I think we've got a, a strong balanced squad to, to go with our, our quicks and, and Nathan Lyon. Um, and hopefully we can, can start off the first test match really well here at the Gabba. Um, barring injury, do you, do you see the selectors sticking with this with this team now through the Ashes, regardless of performance, perhaps in the first test? Ideally, we'd like to think we c we can, of course, um, providing everything's going going well. Uh, if not, we'll we'll address that as we go along. But uh, we would ideally like to keep this unit together because we we consider that this this type of group can play together for some time. Steve, how important is that to to, to keep the team? the same through a series like this? Uh, look, you obviously need guys to, to step up and perform. Um, the first two test matches are, are crucial and you've got to start the series off really well in a five-match series against England. Uh, it's an Ashes series. It's a, it's a huge contest and um, one that I know that all the boys are really excited about getting started on Thursday. Just in terms, uh, Trevor, in terms of picking uh, six batsmen and, uh, and only four bowlers, is there any concerns over that? Was an all-rounder considered for that number six spot? Or are you kind of happy with the four quicks, uh, yeah, we, three quicks? And yeah, we always consider the extra bowling option and, and sometimes Steve would certainly like that. There's no doubt about that. But initially we feel this is the best uh, line-up to give us every chance of, of, of winning the first Test match. Um, Steve, you've, you've talked a lot about the importance of a keeper in terms of reading the game and, and the energy and whatnot. Are you confident you can get that relationship going with Tim, you know, straight away from ball one? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've known Tim for a, a very long time. In fact, we debuted in the, the same game back in 2010. So, look, he's a, a guy who's got some, um, some incredible knowledge on the game. Uh, he's got a great presence out in the field and he's a, he's a terrific gloveman. So, um, you know, his inclusion may have come as a bit of a surprise to, to a lot of people, but, you know, I'm excited by what he brings to the team and I, I'm sure he'll do a terrific job for us. And Trevor, there's been a lot of discussion and debate about, you know, where some of the older guys sit in, um, in things. Should Sean Marsh's selection offer some of those guys who are over 30, over 34, 35, hope? Well, I, I would think so. I, I would think it's the, the type of selection that A is warranted, number one. And secondly, it also displays that, that we're just not here to pick a development side, as has been touted a little bit in the past, and that's just a nonsense. And sorry, one last one for me uh, with Chad Sayers. Is that a bit of a pointer that, you know, with the quick turnaround that maybe one of the quicks might have to miss that Adelaide test and he might come in to, to debut? Yeah, it's, it's no secret that, that Chad's selection or inclusion in the squad is, is with a view to the Adelaide test match. He knows the conditions very, very well there. He bowls well there. So he's an option for us if required. I'm not suggesting for one moment that he will automatically be included, but he just gives us that option uh, of that type of bowler in those conditions. Uh, Steve, what do you say to a guy like Matt Renshaw to keep his head up after the first sort of big disappointment of his career? Yeah, I spoke to him last night actually, and um, he was obviously disappointed to, to not be included in the squad, um, as you should be. You know, you always want to be playing for Australia. So for him, it's, it's about going back and, and just scoring as many runs as he can. Um, you know, I, I think he's a, an incredibly talented player and I think he's got a big future for Australia. Um, but he unfortunately hasn't been able to get the runs on the board that the selectors wanted um, in, in the JLT Cup and the first couple of Shield games. And the Ashes isn't a place where you, you need to be trying to find your form. So I think that's um, great what the selectors have done. They've gone with the guys that are in form. And if the top six are, are getting big runs for us, I'm confident that our bowlers can, can do the job and take the 20 wickets we need to, to win these first two test matches. Uh, Steve, that, was that Shield game where Cameron Bancroft um, made two half centuries against you guys uh, last week? Was that a bit of an eye-opener to his talent? Yeah, I think he's he's been looked at for, for some time. Obviously, he was included on the tour to Bangladesh a couple of years ago, um, which, which didn't go ahead. 
Um, and I, I guess the selectors said at the start of Sheffield Shield that you know players are there's a bit of pressure on for some spots and guys that can can score big runs and and put their hand up are going to be considered and he's one that I thought played particularly well against you know a test attack um, particularly the first innings there was a bit of grass on the wicket and it was doing a bit and you know he's got a lot of time as a batsman he's um, composed he's he's probably tightened his technique up a lot since I saw him last and you know if he if he goes in with that same mindset in Test cricket, then um, hopefully he can score some big runs for us at the top of the order. Steve, is um, Sean Marsh another one talking about that Shield game? Is he someone who, who really impressed you there to a point where you're confident he can he can deliver now? Yeah, I, I thought he played very well, and um, you know, obviously he's been opening the batting. So um, you know, number six is a spot where you could potentially face the second new ball. Um, so he's been doing that and he scored some, some good runs against us at Hurstville against the, the test attack and um, you know he's hitting the ball really well. I, I think Justin Lang has been saying for some time he's in the form of his life and it looked like he was batting incredibly well. So you know I'm confident in the six batters that we've picked that they can do a terrific job. And Trevor, there's always sort of discussion and debate and disagreements, I'm sure, in these selection meetings. Is this the, you know, one of the toughest that you've been involved with just for a range of factors? Yeah, I think that's probably a fair comment. We, it took us quite a while because uh, there were several contenders for various positions, as, as everybody knows. Um, there were a lot of um, underperformers as well, so we really didn't have anybody jumping out at us to demand selection, except for Cameron Bancroft, who put a, a, a case forward that was irresistible. And, and really, that's what we're asking our players to do now, uh, not mediocre performances. We want to raise the bar, so we want some of them now uh, belting the door down with performance to keep the pressure on the boys that have been chosen. And, and I think that will make our whole competition, our whole Australian set up, our, our Australian side, a lot, lot stronger if there is good competition for positions. Do you have any theories on why the batting ranks mightn't be have a bit more depth to them? No, not not really, Crash. I, I think uh, there's so much cricket played these days, it's very difficult to, to put a finger on that. Whether it's the influence of the short form, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but uh, there is a lot played. We just need players that can get in there and, and bat for periods of time, of course, and accumulate a lot of runs. And uh, as Stephen has, has quite rightly pointed out, if we make enough runs, very, very confident our bowlers will do the job.